Today we're having a Pixar short film festival, Nikki Mara style. Hi everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had the best week and are ready for yet another fun ranking video. And oh my god, you guys, I am so unbelievably excited for today's video because this is a topic that I have been holding off for for a while now. It has been quite a while since we've talked about Pixar here on the channel, but if you know anything about Pixar, you know that they have to do very little in order to hit us all in the feels. Anyone else remember the beginning of Up? Yikes. <laughs> yes, and while we have ranked all of Pixar's animated films before on the channel, today we are delving into some shorter but no less complex films as we are going to be talking about all of Pixar's short films. If you weren't already aware, Pixar started off by creating short films in order to test qualities for their full-length animated movies, and over the years they just continued to create short films, some of which have to do with full-length animated features, which won't necessarily be on today's list, but there are some that are completely original with brand new characters and storylines, and they are really, really good. Well, the majority of them. <laughs> and so if you are ready to delve into some lesser known Pixar stories but still incredible quality, then make sure to stick around because I have a lot of thoughts on all of these super fun short films. If you're new here, hi, my name's Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator here on YouTube. I did get my start over on TikTok but have ventured on over to YouTube and I have been loving making long form videos for you guys. So if you are a Disney fan and like to kick back and talk about all things Disney and Pixar, make sure to hit subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on magic from me. And with my current content schedule, I am posting long form videos every single Friday at 5 p.m. And while I have talked about a lot of Disney topics to this date, I still have a lot that I want to touch on, so make sure to hit subscribe so that way you don't miss out on any of the future magic. And if I happen to rank your favorite Pixar short film in a really high position today, make sure to like the video. Now before we get into today's list, I do have some brief disclaimers and conditions for the list today, which I do recommend watching at least the conditions because not every short film is going to end up on today's list. But if you would like to jump right into the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company, and I do not speak for the brand or the company. Any and all opinions in this video are just my own. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney and Pixar characters and films down in my comment section. So make sure to leave all of your thoughts down below. I love getting to connect with you guys about all of our favorite Pixar and Disney characters. So make sure to leave all your thoughts down below because there is room for everyone. And lastly, for our disclaimers today, big spoiler warning for all of the Pixar short films. As a part of the ranking list today, I am going to be going through the plot of each one, and so if you don't want the plot spoiled for a specific short, then you can just skip on up to the next number on today's list. Next, moving on to our conditions for the list today, because we had to do some major cuts. Today we are going to be talking about Pixar's 20 original animated short films. Now, original film, what does that mean exactly? For this list, we are not going to be talking about the feature-related shorts. The feature-related shorts actually reference characters in the full-length animated features of the Pixar studio. So think of Jack-Jack's Nom Nom Cookies, or Mater and the Ghost Light. We aren't going to be touching any of these animated films because they directly correlate with an original animated movie. Today's list is strictly the originals. In addition, we are not going to be talking about any Pixar short films from the Spark short series, as that would had way too many shorts to dive in deep for this specific video. And finally, we will not be touching on any Pixar popcorn shorts. Each of these are just different categories of shorts, and I really want to stick to just one category for today, which is the originals. And the reason I want to stick to one category is because I really want to dive in deep to all of these animated shorts and give you all of my thoughts on them and even some background to the animated films. And the more numbers that we add to these videos, the less detail I can really go in with each one. And so I wanted to limit today's list to the 20 original animated short films, so that way we can go really in-depth and talk about everything. And with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to start talking about Disney and Pixar's short films. Oh yes, and really quick, I did want to go through the talking points that we're going to touch on for each of these movies. First, we're going to be talking about the release year, so the year that each specific Pixar short film was released. We're going to touch on the length of the short film and how long each story is. I'm going to be going through a brief synopsis of each story. Fourth, we're going to be talking about where it was released, either a home video release or a theatrical release. And finally, we're going to be touching on any awards and nominations that the short film received. So we have 20 movies and five touching points for each movie, so we got a lot on our plate. I think it is time to start ranking Disney and Pixar's original short films. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, 
and let's get started. We are starting off today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 20, which is Tin Toy. Now, Tin Toy was released in the year 1988, and it is a five minute short. A lot of people credit Tin Toy with being like the first iteration of Toy Story, considering a lot of the elements of both stories are very similar, just none of the same characters and none of the same setting. And a very different feeling. <laughs> tin Toy tells the story of Tinny, the little tin toy, who is a, like a one man band kind of guy. He's the one that has the big drum on his stomach and the little symbols on his back, and when he walks he makes music. Think Bert and Mary Poppins. <laughs> and in the short film, we see an open bag and an open box, so it's assumed that he is a brand new toy to the household. As he's looking around, a little baby rounds the corner and starts to play with some of the toys around him. In a rather gross and violent manner. There's a lot of toys going in his mouth and a lot of banging and this starts to worry the little tin toy. <laughs> and so he does try to run away, but that only creates noise, which attracts the baby. But eventually he is able to escape under the couch where he sees a lot of other toys cowering in fear. As he looks out from underneath the couch, the little baby falls and bumps its head and it starts to cry. And Tinny, the tin toy feeling really bad, goes back out to try to cheer up the little baby. And eventually the baby only wants to play with his box and the bag that he came in. <laughs> Tin Toy premiered with the home video release of Toy Story, and it won the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. Now, I'm going to be very honest. I do not like this short film. <laughs> this one is difficult to enjoy for me for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, the animation quality is not the greatest, and that is understandable, because this was the fourth short film that the Pixar studio had ever created. It was bound to be rough at the beginning, and this one is, it's evident of the roughness of it. But in addition, there is this sort of like uncanny feeling at the very beginning when you're looking around the room, because there's not a whole lot to look at. In a lot of ways, it kind of looks like a semi-abandoned house, and it's a little weird. And the third reason I find it really difficult to enjoy this is that I think the animated baby in this short is nothing less than creepy. As rough as the animation may have looked for a lot of the toys and the furniture, to try to create a realistic human back in 1988 for 3D animation, this is like as rough as you can possibly get. And what's so strange about this is that the baby looks so rough in the animation that a lot of it starts to feel like a horror movie, and I think that's unintentional. <laughs> but again, this is just my personal feeling. I can't argue with a Best Animated Feature Academy Award, so you know what? Tin Toy makes the list, and we gotta appreciate it because we got every other animated short film, and we wouldn't have had those without Tin Toy, so you know what? Let's throw some appreciation at it. <laughs> but with that, we move on up to number 19 on my list today which is Red's Dream. Now, Red's Dream was released one year prior to Tin Toy, coming out in the year 1987. And Red's Dream tells its entire story in only a four minute runtime, which is pretty impressive to be completely honest, because this one, in all honesty, is kind of emotionally hard hitting. But yes, Red's Dream tells the story of a little red tricycle that is discounted within a bicycle store. We see the little tricycle leaned up against the wall looking rather sad, but then we very soon go into a dream sequence. In this dream, Red, who is the little tricycle, is performing in a circus. He is being ridden by a clown who is juggling and who isn't very good at juggling. And so Red, the tricycle, sort of has to be the one to help save the clown's act, either darting out from under the clown to rescue a ball that he's dropped, or save the show in some way, shape, or form. Eventually the clown falls and Red itself has to finish the show juggling all three of the balls with his two little pedals. <laughs> the crowd ends up cheering wildly for Red as he is such a success, However, at the very end of the film, Red wakes up and realizes that he is still discounted within the bicycle store. And so he rolls himself back over to the corner and falls against the wall, waiting for someone to come and buy him. Ooh, this is deep and sad. And this one left me very, very sad. Now, Red's Dream actually had a theatrical release as it premiered alongside the Disney movie, Home on the Range. And this short film unfortunately did not receive any nominations or wins for the Academy Award. Now, I'll be honest, for my personal thoughts on this one, I, it was okay. It was very emotionally hard hitting. Like it did make me sad at the very end when we realized that he is not fulfilling his dream, but rather just waiting around in a discounted shop. But the reason why this one ranks so low is because much like the baby from Tin Toy, the clown in this animated film is just pure 
nightmare fuel. Again, because this was early days of animation, realistic, like, human-esque characters were not the strongest yet. And so seeing a clown come to life in, like, this uncanny world, it's weird. It's creepy. I'm not a fan of clowns, and this is mm, mm, not my favorite. <laughs> But as for the tricycle red, I do very much feel for the trike, and I did emotionally latch onto him, and I hope that one day he's able to fulfill his dreams within the circus. <laughs> but next we're moving on up to number 18 on my list, which is the adventures of Andre and Wally B. Now the adventures of Andre and Wally B was released in the year 1984 and was actually Pixar's first animated short film. Now a lot of this short film feels very, very experimental seeing as it was the very first one and they had to keep it short and sweet and very simple. And that being said, the runtime of Adventures of Andre and Wally B is one singular minute. Now as for the story, again, keeping it simple, this short film tells the story of Andre who is waking up and finding himself in the middle of the woods and he interacts with Wally B who is a little bumblebee. Andre, not really wanting to interact with the bee, sort of points off in the distance and tries to distract Wally B as he runs away. Wally B realizes what's happening, turns around and follows him, and from some off-screen sounds we can deduce that Wally B ends up stinging Andre, seeing as he flies back across the screen with a little broken stinger attached. <laughs> this is as simple as you can get for a Pixar animated film, but in all honesty, it's not the worst one on my list today, so that's gotta say something for it. The Adventures of Andre and Wally B was actually a theatrical release, which released with Toy Story. And much like Red Stream, it was not nominated or did not win for any of the Academy Awards for Best Animated Short Film. As for my personal opinion, for their first crack at an animated short film, I don't think it's the worst possible thing we could have gotten. Now, I'll be honest, the animation is quite rough and the storytelling is not super complex, but Again, that's totally to be expected. So in all honesty, I'm not gonna rank this one at last. It is gonna go a little bit higher than some others on the list because this one at least didn't bring me into uncanny valley territory with the character animations. <laughs> this one's okay. I don't feel like you're gonna watch this one and say, wow, that's a minute of my time I'll never get back. Like if, if you're watching this with the expectation of, I wanna see where Pixar started, humble beginnings, but still it's a starting point. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 17 on my list which is Luxo Jr. Now, whether or not you've seen this short film, if you've watched a Pixar movie, you have definitely seen Luxo Jr. as Luxo is the little lamp that comes out at the beginning in front of the words Pixar and jumps on the little eye, only to be caught by you, the viewer. <laughs> Luxo Jr. was the second animated short film to come out of the Pixar company, and it was released in the year 1986. And again, seeing as it was one of the first short films to debut, this one has a very short runtime of only two minutes. This adorable little short tells the story of Luxo, a lamp, and Luxo Jr., a smaller lamp. <laughs> this is also the origin of the iconic Pixar ball, which I'm sure you've seen around some of our most favorite Disney Pixar animated films, as Pixar likes to hide this little ball in all of their animated features. But yes, this short film takes us up onto a desk where we see Luxo looking around. Eventually Luxo Jr. comes into the picture kicking around the little Pixar ball. He's playing around with it and jumps on top of it and eventually it deflates. And he seems kind of sad that his little ball deflated and that he can't play with it anymore. We see him jump off screen and after a little bit of time, he comes back with an even bigger ball, which he seems very excited about. And believe me, as simple as the storytelling may be, there's actually a ton of personality in both of these lamps which is probably why they've become so iconic in the Pixar realm. Even without having faces, you can tell exactly what both of these lamps are thinking and what they're doing. Now, Luxo Jr. was released alongside the film Toy Story 2, both in theaters and also in the home video release. And although it didn't win the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film, it was Pixar's first nomination. I love Luxo Jr. and I think he's absolutely iconic and I'm so glad that he is one of Disney and Pixar's most iconic spokespeople. <laughs> but with that, we're moving on up to number 16 on my list, which is Knick Knack. Now, Knick Knack was created in the year 1989, however, it released in the year 2003. And this film is a three-minute short film telling us all about some knickknacks. 
This short film tells us about a little snowman who is in an adorable little snow globe. He is on a shelf in someone's home, along with a bunch of other knickknacks which very much look like souvenirs from different places around the world. And it is safe to say that this little snowman loves the ladies, <laughs> as one of the other knickknacks up on the shelf is shaped to be like a woman at the beach. And she's waving at him and motioning for him to come over and hang out with all of the other knickknacks. And so the snowman tries several different ways to escape the snow globe, including a hand some TNT, and even a jackhammer. <laughs> Eventually, all of these different methods to break out of the snow globe fail. However, in trying to break out, the snowman actually pushes the snow globe to the edge of the shelf, and it does fall off. Now, midair, he's able to escape it through a little trapdoor in the bottom of it, and he lands in a fishbowl where he finds himself next to yet another knickknack of a mermaid. And as he's about to go and hang out with her, the snow globe of course floats down around him and is once again blocking him from reaching the mermaid. <laughs> this one is very silly and very cute, and it does have quite simple animation. Now, Knickknack was originally released in theaters along with Finding Nemo, and was also released in theaters with another animated film, which was The Nightmare Before Christmas 3D. And eventually it did have its home video premiere, again, with Finding Nemo. But unfortunately, it was not nominated for the Academy Award for Best Short Film. This one is cute. Not one of my favorites, but definitely worth a watch. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 15 on my list which is Boundin. Boundin is a 2004 animated short film, and this one we actually get a little bit more runtime with a total of six minutes. Boundin tells the story of a little lamb with a full coat. This coat of wool makes him feel very confident, and he also loves to dance. When he goes out and dances, all of his neighbors applaud him and are rooting him on as they love his art. One day, some humans are passing by in a car, and they happen to grab the lamb and shave him clean. Because he's embarrassed by his appearance, he doesn't find himself dancing anymore, seeing as he doesn't want to get made fun of by the people around him. One day, a jackalope comes bounding through the land and sees him, and decides to give him some advice that he shouldn't care what other people think as long as he is happy in his own life and doing what he loves to do, which is to dance. He says, as long as you're doing what you love and you're happy doing doing it, you shouldn't care about what other people criticize about you. And this is actually the first Disney Pixar film that Pixar ever released that has an actual narrator and spoken word dialogue in it. Now it does rank relatively low for me, and it's not specifically for this reason, but I tend to gravitate towards the animated films that don't really need a lot of words in order to convey their messages. Now, Bound in debuted alongside The Incredibles, both in its theatrical release and in its home DVD release. And as for the Academy Award, it was indeed nominated for the Academy Award for the Best Animated Short Film. I like this one. I think it is very cute. Um, nothing that I dislike about it, it's just I like a lot more of the animated short films a lot more than this one. Next we move on up to number 14 on my list which is the Blue Umbrella. Now the Blue Umbrella is actually a big jump into the future for us, having been released in the year 2013. And this short film supplies us with a six minute runtime of gorgeous animation. The Blue Umbrella tells the story about a city where it starts to rain. We see a lot of the pedestrians start to pull out their umbrellas, the majority of which are black. However, the two main umbrellas that we get to see in this story is a blue umbrella and a red umbrella. We follow the blue umbrella whose pedestrian is walking by the pedestrian with the red umbrella. We see the two umbrellas start to have some looks towards each other and even some chemistry between them, and their faces are very cutely animated. As most pedestrians do, eventually the two do end up separating and walking in different directions, much to the dismay of the two umbrellas. And as the wind starts to pick up, the blue umbrella is actually snatched away by the wind, finding himself getting battered all over the city by different things. Blue Umbrella ends up face down in the street where the owner is actually able to find it. And interestingly enough, as the Blue Umbrella is getting picked up and brushed off a little bit, the owner of the Red Umbrella along with the Red Umbrella comes up and starts to make sure that the pedestrian and his umbrella is okay. And we finally see both the pedestrians and the umbrellas outside sitting together at a little cafe. This one is quite cute indeed, but I love the animation style for this one. This animated short film debuted with the movie Monsters University, both in theaters and on home DVD release. And unfortunately it was not nominated and did not win any awards for the Academy Award for the short films. I like this one quite a bit. It is very beautiful in animation style. 
But again, there are a lot of other stories that I just gravitate to a little bit more. But next we move on up to number 13 on my list. The first one on the list that I actually really, really like to watch. At number 13 is Jerry's Game. Now Jerry's Game premiered in the year 1997 and it is a four minute short of just pure fun and it'll make anybody smile, truly. It's so good. Jerry's Game tells the story of an old gentleman named Jerry. He's out in the park wanting to play a game of chess, and so he sits down at the table and sets up the entire game. He is sitting on the side of the white pieces and makes the first move. Then he gets up, walks around to the other side of the table, and makes a move as the black pieces. He continues to do this for the entire game, but what I love about this feature is that it cuts out the walking back and forth and animates it as if he is playing a game just with himself, but the camera cuts between two different people. It's him and him. Eventually, the white pieces playing Jerry loses everything but his king. Knowing that he's losing, he pretends to have a little heart attack and falls to the ground, and the Jerry playing with the black pieces checks to make sure he's okay. The white pieces Jerry eventually turns the board around to <laughs> somehow fool the black piece playing Jerry, and it kind of does, and the original Jerry playing with the black pieces ends up forfeiting over his dentures to the winner, winner of this game. <laughs> it is a very cute short film. I very much enjoy this one and it makes me giggle every single time. Jerry's Game debuted with the Bugs Life film, both in theaters and at home, and it was indeed nominated for the Academy Award for the Short Film of the Year, and it won, and it is evident as to why, because this one is just so much fun to watch. But next we move on up to number 12 on my list, which is For the Birds. Now, For the Birds was released in the year 2001, and it is a three-minute animated short film. For the Birds tells the story of a bunch of birds who are hanging out on a power line. There are a lot of smaller birds that all kind of look the same and have some mean-spirited nature, and then there is one bigger bluebird who's kind of on his own in terms of looks. He sits off to the side. The smaller, meaner birds start to gather on this power line, and they start to peck each other to make sure they each have their own space and eventually the bigger bluebird comes and joins them. Now, when the bigger bird puts his weight on the power line, it sinks the power line down. The smaller birds start to peck at him to try to get him to fall off of the power line, even to the point where he's holding on with one of his talons. And it's only then, when it's too late, that they realize that the power line has sunk all the way down to the ground. And so when that talon releases, all of the smaller birds are slingshot up into the air. The bigger bluebird looks around wondering what happened, seeing a bunch of feathers coming down, and one by one these smaller birds start to fall back to earth, having been completely stripped of their feathers. Which brings the bigger bird quite a bit of enjoyment and laughter. Again, this one is very simple, but very, very fun, and I think it has a really great message of karma, to be completely honest. The little birds were being kind of mean, and so they got some negative energy back. For the Birds was first released in theaters alongside Monsters, Inc., but also debuted in theaters alongside the film Luca. And in addition, it also also appeared alongside Monsters, Inc. in the home video release. And as for the Academy Award, it was nominated and it actually did win for Best Animated Short Film of the Year. I really love this one. I think this one truly can be enjoyed by anybody. It has a great yet simple message and it is quite funny. You will find yourself laughing alongside the big blue bird. But next we move on up to number 11 on my list which is Presto. Presto is a five-minute short film that was released in the year 2008. This short film tells the story of Presto, who is a magician, and his adorable little bunny sidekick, Alec. The pair is about to go out and do a show for a huge audience, and they're getting ready backstage. Presto is getting out his magical hats, which have a really strange teleportation ability, and Alec is really interested in grabbing a hold of a carrot because he's a little bit hungry before the show. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the time to eat, and they are rushed out onto the stage. And Alec, being very adamant about wanting a carrot, starts to wreck the performance of Presto. This happens for quite a bit of time, but it is very cute and very enjoyable. However, at the very end, we see him messing with Presto's performance, but it actually turns out to be quite a great show and the audience very much enjoys it, taking it in as not only a magic show, but also a comedy performance. Eventually, Presto ends up in a lot of danger and Alec ends up saving him, and so Presto is happy to give him a carrot and they are a big hit amongst the audience. Presto debuted alongside the animated film Wally, not only in theaters, but also on the home video release, and it was indeed nominated for the Academy Award for Best Short Film. I love Presto. I think it is very silly, very fun, and it is just one that, again, 
anybody can enjoy. But with that, we have reached number 10 and the halfway point of my Pixar animated film ranking. If you are liking the video so far, make sure to like down below. And here's hoping that your favorite animated Pixar short film ends up in the top 10. Starting off our top 10 at number 10 is Sanjay's Super Team. Now Sanjay's Super Team is one of the newer Pixar films as it debuted in the year 2017. It is a seven minute short film and the animation in this one is truly stunning. Sanjay's Super Team tells the story of Sanjay, who is the director who actually worked on this film, and his father. And it's based on a real life interaction that the two of them had. Sanjay is a young boy enjoying his favorite animated TV show and his father walks over and begins to pray. His father invites him over to come over and pray at the small Hindu shrine that is in the room, eventually turning off the TV and beckoning his son to come over. And through some strange events, Sanjay comes over and is transported into an ancient Hindu temple. He sees three stone statues which are all being destroyed by Ravana, who is the evil demon king, and he is stealing the weapons that are attached to each of the stone statues. Sanjay lights a lamp that is in the temple and it brings these three statues to life. And so the statues of Vishnu, Durga, and Hanuman eventually come to life to defeat Ravana. Once the trio wins, Sanjay is returned back home, where he rushes back over, turns on his show, and starts to draw. And he shows his father his new drawing of the three gods standing over and protecting the characters from his favorite TV show. This one has truly stunning animation and really connects the worlds of the gods and the superheroes. This is such a fun story, and honestly, it's very heartwarming. Definitely recommend. Sanjay's Super Team was released both in theaters and on home video alongside the good Dinosaur, and it was indeed nominated for the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. But with that, we're moving on up to number nine on my list, which is Lava. Now, Lava was released in the year 2015 and is the only musical version of an animated short film by Pixar, and its runtime is nine minutes, the majority of which contains music and songs that are sung by the characters. Lava tells the story of an adorable little volcano who is watching a bunch of other animal couples around him falling in love. And he himself, being a single volcano out in the middle of the ocean, very much wants to fall in love himself. And so he sings a little song which is so cute and so precious. As the years go on, he slowly sinks into the sea yet continues to sing his song. And one day, another volcano, which is under the surface of the ocean, ends up erupting and moving up to the surface. But as she does this, the other little volcano has to sink back down into the ocean. However, having listened to his song for so many years, she sings it back out, hoping that he will be around to hear it. And as he hears hears her sing the song, he himself erupts back up to the surface, and the two of them end up together as a beautiful volcano couple. So cute to describe, I love this one so much. The short film Lava debuted alongside the film Inside Out, both in theaters and also on home video release. And surprisingly, it was not even nominated for the Academy Award. I find this very surprising considering this is like the only musical version of a Pixar animated short film, and it's really well done. The animation is gorgeous, and the song is really quite cute. I don't know, that's very surprising to me, but it's gonna go at number nine on today's list. Definitely worthy of breaking into the top 10. Oh, I love it. These two volcanoes, they, they are so cute. And in all honesty, they get you emotionally invested in them. <laughs> but next we move on up to number eight on my list which is Partly Cloudy. Partly Cloudy is a 2009 animated short film, and it has a runtime of five minutes. Partly Cloudy tells the story of cloud people who are up in the sky, and they create, using their own clouds, babies, which are brought by the storks down to the parents on Earth. There is one particular cloud who is sort of thunderstorm-esque looking, and he creates a lot of the creatures on Earth that could be considered dangerous. And he has one particular stork that is in charge of delivering all of his creations down to Earth. And this little stork takes a beating, not only delivering an alligator, a ram, and also a porcupine, but at the very end we see him <laughs> with an electric eel. <laughs> now, during the story, we see this damaged stork in emotional distress fly up to a different cloud, which upsets the storm cloud. We see the stork receive a little bundle, and this really makes the storm cloud kind of sad. But the stork returns back over, opening the bundle in front of the storm cloud to reveal that it was only a helmet and some armor so that he can continue delivering all of the more dangerous creatures down to earth. This one is so cute and really, it really gets you in the feels. Now, Partly Cloudy debuted alongside the animated film Up 
not only in theaters, but also on home video release. And it was indeed shortlisted for the Academy Award. Partly Cloudy is so, so cute, and I love getting to see all of the little creatures and how crazy they get with our poor little stork. <laughs> Next, we move on up to number seven on my list, which is Piper. Oh, Piper is so incredibly cute. I love this little birdie. Piper is a 2016 animated short film with a runtime of about six minutes. Piper tells the story of a little baby sandpiper which is a little bird at the coast of the ocean. It is time that she starts getting some food for herself, and so she goes to the water's edge looking for food. She is hit by a big wave, and then we see her become kind of afraid of the water. But eventually she ends up befriending a little hermit crab who shows her that it's not as scary as she originally thought. And so she goes out into the sea and sort of buries herself down in the sand. The water washes over her, and she's able to see all of the food be brought up from the sand by the water. And so she gets to find all of the best and biggest food. This one is so cute and has a really strong message about overcoming your fears. Now, Piper debuted alongside the animated film Finding Dory both in theaters and on home DVD release, and Little Piper not only was nominated but also won for the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. I love Piper's character design. She is so cute and she immediately gets you rooting for her from the start of her film. I love her and have nothing but good things to say about Little Piper. But with that, we're gonna move on up to number six on my list, which is the animated film Bao. Now, Bao is the most recent animated short film to come out of the studio, having been debuted in the year 2018. It is a seven-minute short film, and it is... It's, it's a deep one. It's get ready for some emotions to come forth. <laughs> Bao tells the story of a Chinese-Canadian woman who is making dinner for herself and her husband. After her husband leaves, she is eating, and one of the Bao buns that she has made comes to life and sprouts some eyes, a body, and even some arms and legs. Being shocked, she doesn't initially know what to do, but eventually she ends up raising it like a child. She becomes a very caring yet somewhat overprotective mother to her little bao bun, and this lasts from childhood all the way through to the bao bun's adulthood. We see the bao bun getting more and more independent and sort of resistant to its mother's love, and eventually the bao bun gets a fiance and decides to leave home, and in a desperate attempt to try to stop the bao bun from leaving, the mother eats him, and knowing the weight of what she's just done, it breaks her down. We see her laying in bed, and eventually the door opens, and we see that the woman has a son. Now at this point in the animated film, we as an audience are supposed to put together that the bao bun was an allegorical dream for her son. However, her son has brought with him some food that she often gave to him when he was very little, and we see them restore their relationship and become a beautiful, happy family once again. And it is even very sweet at the very end that we get to see his fiance taking part in some of their family traditions. Bao is absolutely heartbreaking, but such a beautiful beautiful animated film. I think it perfectly displays the human experience. Now, Bao was released alongside the animated film The Incredibles 2, and this was both for the theatrical release and also on home DVD. And as for the Academy Award, it did in fact win for Best Animated Short Film. I love this one. I highly recommend to anybody that just wants to sit down and get in their feels, because let me tell you, Bao this one will do it for you. <laughs> but with that, we've reached the top five. At number five on my list is Lifted. Now, Lifted is a 2007 animated short film with a runtime of approximately four minutes. Lifted tells the story of two aliens who are in a UFO. They're right next to a house which is in the middle of rural America, and the smaller of the two aliens is in the middle of a test to successfully abduct a human, <laughs> meaning he's being adjudicated by the larger of the two aliens. This one is so incredibly funny. I highly recommend to anybody that wants a comedic experience. I actually don't even want to tell you the rest in depth. I really want you to see this one on its own because it is so, so funny. And I have to point out that I absolutely love the use of comedic timing and also the use of music and when it is cut off. It is just absolutely genius and adds to the entire experience of this animated film. So yes, I'm not telling you the rest of the plot, but definitely go check this one out. It's only four minutes. You have no excuse. <laughs> Lift was released alongside the animated film Ratatouille on both home video and theatrical release, and it was in fact nominated for the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Feature. Again, 
please do yourself a favor and look this one up. It is so, so funny. And stay through the end of the credits because there is a great audible gag at the very, very end. <laughs> Next, we move on up to number four on my list which is the film Lou. Now, Lou was released in the year 2017 and has a six minute runtime and it uses its six minutes, let me tell you. The story of Lou is a little creature that is created from lost items in a school lost and found. The creature looks out and sees the character JJ at recess who is bullying other kids and taking a lot of their items and shoving them in his bag. As recess ends, Lou emerges from the box and sort of has this quaffle for the bag with JJ. They go back and forth chasing each other around the playground and sort of taking the bag back and forth. Eventually, the creature Lou sees a tag on his clothing that says JJ, so he finds out his name, and he pulls out a plush animal dog. We then see a flashback from JJ's perspective back to when his little plush dog was taken from him by some bigger bullies. Eventually, the creature agrees to give back the plush dog. However, JJ has to return all of the items from the lost and found. As JJ is returning all of the items, he sees the joy that it brings to the other children to receive their items back, and he becomes very motivated in returning all of these items to their owners. As he's running back and forth, getting very eager about returning the items, he sees that there's only one item left in the box, that item being his plush dog. And it's even shown that, yes, all of the items that made up the creature Lou were also returned, and we see little bits of him around the park with different children. This one is so sweet and has such an incredible message about being willing to do good things for other people, even when you yourself have been wronged. This is one that I think everyone should see. It is so beautiful, so perfect, and one that I actually didn't know about until pretty recently. I think the first time I ever saw it was only a few months back, but I absolutely love it and will be rewatching this one quite a bit. Now, Lou debuted alongside the film Cars 3 in both the theatrical release and the home video release, and it was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Short Film for the Year. I just love this one. This one is so wonderful and so sweet and touching. Highly, highly recommend. Next, we move on up to number three on my list which is Day and Night. Now, Day and Night was released in the year 2010 and has a seven minute runtime, and my gosh, does this one pack a punch. Night and Day tells the story about two animated characters who are night and day. They look very similar to each other. However, inside of their character outline, one of them showcases the events that happen during the day and the other, the events that happen at night. At the very start of the film, they see each other and begin to fight as they are very different and they have nothing in common with each other. But eventually they start to see each other's events happening inside of their bodies and realize that they have a lot of great experiences that they themselves don't get. For example, night looks at day and sees, wow, daytime gets some rainbows. And day looks over at night and says, wow, those are beautiful fireworks. You would never see those during the day. This short film makes use of a lot of very natural things to replicate things that happen to the human body. For example, like an ache or a pain might be like an earthquake if you have like a little crack in your arm. Or like tripping and falling down would be like a tree falling down in the woods. But eventually daytime walks over and there is a radio tower. And the radio tower explains that people fight each other because they do not like what they see on the outside. And this immediately creates such a deep feeling for this entire animated short. Because the two, even though animation-wise they're not really that different, see each other as different and begin to fight right away, even though there are a lot of experiences that each one has that the other is very interested in. And it's very, very sweet and touching to see the two of them come together at the end as friends and realizing that they're not so different specifically because of the event of the sunset. Now, Night and Day was released alongside the animated film Toy Story 3 and was in fact nominated for the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. I absolutely love this one. I think this one has such an incredible message of seeing our differences and appreciating them rather than seeing them as something to divide us. I just love it and I think this should absolutely be a film that everybody watches. I think this one is incredibly profound and very sweet and touching and has such a strong and important message. But with that we've reached number two on my list at number two is La Luna. Now I know usually a lot of people have La Luna at number one but I I like there's one, there is one for me that beats this one out. So yes, La Luna. La Luna was released in the year 2012 and has a six minute runtime. God, is it just me? I feel like all of these animated movies are so much longer, but that's, 
Oh, so incredible. In six minutes, they're able to tell this whole story. So cool. La Luna tells the story of a little boy and two older gentlemen who are sailing across the sea. The older gentlemen are trying to put some of their traits onto this little boy, such as the way he wears his hat or what he uses to sweep with. But yes, eventually the moon rises and they pull a ladder out of a little box on the boat. The boy climbs up and eventually floats up to the moon and he and the gentleman walk along the moon and have to sweep a bunch of stars that are illuminated on the moon to create the different phases of the moon. So at the beginning of the animated film, the stars cover the whole moon, so it's the full moon, and eventually they move them over to create a crescent moon. This one is very iconic in terms of look, very sweet and very, very touching. This one is very iconic in look and I absolutely love the animation style. It is so beautiful. And its message of being able to do extraordinary things such as change the moon's phases while also being true to yourself, seeing as the boy doesn't necessarily gravitate towards the way that the two other men do things. He ends up wearing his hat backwards as opposed to the way the other two do, and he ends up sweeping them in a different way than either of them are instructing him to do. So yes, you can be your own individual, but also do extraordinary things. I just love that message. Now, La Luna debuted alongside the animated film Brave, both in home release DVD and also in theaters. And surprisingly, it was only nominated for the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. It didn't end up winning, which I think is an outrage. This short film is so, so beautiful. I, it, it's a masterpiece from start to finish. You just gotta see this one. It is so beautiful. And again, only six minutes, only six minutes. And I feel like it has such a profound impact on the Pixar company. Oh, I just love it. But with that, friends, we've reached number one on my list of favorite animated Pixar short films. Have you possibly guessed which one it could be? I tried to give you a little hint at the beginning of this video, so go back and see if you can find where it is. But at number one is One Man Band. Now, One Man Band was released in the year 2006 and only has a four minute runtime. One Man Band tells the story of two musicians who are performing in the same town square. A little girl with a golden coin is coming through wanting to throw that coin into the town square fountain. However, both of these musicians start to play in order to impress her. They start pulling out more stops and more contraptions on their one man band mechanisms to try to outdo each other other and to pull out all the stops in order to impress her so that she will give them her coin. Eventually she gets so overwhelmed that she drops her coin and it goes into a sewer grate. The little girl gets very angry, delivering probably one of the most iconic angry faces of all time and demands a little coin from one of them. When they don't have a coin to give her, she ends up demanding the violin off of one of the one man's band mechanisms. She ends up playing the little violin and earning a big pot of coins, of which she pulls two out, presumably going to give one to each of the gentlemen. However, she does no such thing and tosses both of them back into the fountain. This little girl is such a girl boss. I love her. She is so iconic and ugh. This one just makes me laugh, and I love all of the one-man band accessories that each of the musicians have. I personally am more so along the side of the musician that wears the blue and green. I really love all of his contraptions and mechanisms, and I love that his belt sort of looks like a pirate ship. It's really cool. But yes, there is also a fun little animated segment at the very end, which shows the two musicians trying to climb on top of each other in order to fish out the two coins from the fountain, and it is very silly and very fun. Now, one-man band debuted alongside the animated film Cars, both in theaters and in home release DVD. And once again, it did not win the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. However, it was indeed nominated. God, I love this short film. It is so fun from start to finish, has a lot of incredibly difficult music in it, and also perfectly creates the atmosphere and the situation at hand. This one is not to be missed. I am telling you, you will absolutely enjoy this one. Definitely 10 out of 10 record. Recommend. Whew. And with that, friends, we have talked about all of the original Disney Pixar animated short films. Thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun talking about all of these short films. They are truly some of the most iconic pieces of art, seeing as there are little to no words involved, yet each one of them has so much meaning and so much potential to be a truly full-length animated feature. Some of these I would love to see made out to be two, three-hour movies, wouldn't you? But yes, if you had as much fun as I did talking about all of these incredible 
beautiful animated features, make sure to like this video down below and subscribe so that way you never miss magic from me. Because I have a lot more planned for the future and I am so excited for the upcoming months on this channel. If you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. Again, massive thank you to each and every one of you for your support and love on this channel. I am having so much fun getting to connect with all of you fellow Disney fans out there. And believe me when I say there is plenty more, not only Disney, but also Pixar to come in the future on this channel. So make sure to stay tuned for all of the magic coming in the future. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Stay magical, enjoy the rest of your week, and until next time, I'll see y'all real soon.